My biggest fear personally is drowning. Breaking a bone. Getting lost in the woods. Falling. My biggest fear is defeat. Coyotes or bears? I think it would be loss. Spiders. Stage fright. I'm afraid of snakes. Spiders, definitely. Bears, definitely. Losing. Quitting. I'm scared of being buried alive. Snakes. Heights and darkness. Not just the dark, but darkness. My biggest fear is being alone. Uh, the big fear of mine is just really doing something new, honestly. Where do you look for it? How do I get it? How do you know when you have it? The truth about bravery is waiting. A force to be discovered, empowered, to face what seems insurmountable, that manifests as fear. And we all have fears, daunting, paralyzing, for the underserved youth in America, their fears are exponentially increased. The statistics say it all. 2,200 teens will drop out of high school every day. 4,353 kids will be arrested every day. 380 kids will be arrested for drug abuse every day. 22% of all teens will be bullied. Has there ever been a more important time to help underserved youth inhabit the truth of who they are, their self-confidence, their courage. And it all starts with discovering what it means to be brave, to empower their bravery, to be the change the world needs. The big question is, can that happen in five days? The mission of Brave Camp is to empower and embolden youth to be able to take on the challenges that they're going to be facing. So even just the littlest things like bugs to hearing about possibly bears and other stuff out in the woods, you mean there's that fear that I think the kids are going to feel first coming here, but then it's slowly going to wash away the more they become confident, not just in their surroundings, but when they recognize that they truly belong here. Just them coming here is bravery in itself, stepping on the bus to come to camp. Because a lot of those kids never left their square block area, have never been miles away from their family, let alone for so many days. Brave Camp uh, was focused on six pillars, and through collaboration with Sierra Nevada Journeys, uh, we worked as a team for well over a year uh, to design a comprehensive curriculum where youth are uh, engaging in uh, meaningful programming that's transferable to their daily lives. My name is David and um, I remember uh, as a kid that um, my dad taught me two things. He said never forget where you're from and always give a hundred percent of your heart and soul. Right, does, can anybody relate to that? Even providing the space for these kind of youth is automatically doing something that's different uh, because with uh, many different programs, you know what I mean, it's oftentimes those who can afford these kind of experiences will do this. And so 
uh, sponsoring the youth in general is already a, a step up. Um, I also see just in terms of self-empowerment, um, I think that's something that's very different. It's more than just um, coming out here to experience the beauty of this place. Um, you're being empowered by this place and being empowered by the people around you. Throughout time, we've been able to help many organizations. We've helped homeless kids off the street. We've helped build roofs for families that lost them in hurricanes. And we established Brave Camp. And we've got some amazing things planned for you over the next week. So let's hear it. Who are you? We are Brave Camp. Who are you? We are Brave Camp. Who are you? We are Brave Camp. All right. Welcome to Brave Camp. What's happening right now is the kids are inside in the small trail groups that they have. And what they're doing is that they're building a team. They're doing something called initiatives. It's their instructors are giving them tasks that they are forced to work together, work on their communication, work on the different things that are helping them become a team. Communication is one of them. Uh, another one could be just uh, empathy, feeling for somebody else, understanding that somebody needs help and going to help. Asking for help is something that a lot of kids, a lot of, honestly, adults nowadays, find a lot of trouble doing. And we're trying to get them to ask for help as well. One of the activities happening right now is called Helium Hoop. What it is is a hula hoop, and you have just two fingers, and your fingers have to stay on the hula hoop the whole time. Our job is to lower it down to the ground. The problem is that when everybody has their hands on the hula hoop, everybody's just unconscious thing is to kind of put pressure on it, is that everybody does that, it rises. And what it is is you need to find a way to communicate with everyone that is in your group to understand it's not about pushing up, it's about letting it fall. And if even one person isn't on the same page with the entire group, it rises. If you go over the plan, you can figure things out. Yeah, plans change, but that's life. The Hedgehog. Wait, and we're Blue Cabin. You we Sonic. We talk about community in our cabins and what does it look like here at camp, but what does it look like in the real world and how can we make sure that we're always building this positive community among each other um, and the people that we're surrounding ourselves with and that starts here. Many of them don't have those relationships at home and those positive communities that they're interacting with at home and they're starting to learn how they can make those things happen on their own. So, for your community agreement, this is, look at the folks around you. These are your roommates for the next week. These are your brothers, you know? You guys are gonna be, you might not, some of you are in the same trail group, but come the evening times and when you're sleeping at night, these are the folks you're living with. So, it's good to have a little group agreement that you guys create so you know how to live together and how to respect each other. We're meeting a lot of kids, different areas, different parts of um, different communities, different schools, different ages. We're just gonna get together, we're gonna keep the same brotherhood that we've always had in the program, and we're just gonna learn to love one another and respect one another. What are some things you think are important that you guys have going on so you can live together in peace and harmony for a week? Um, be respectful to everybody. Yeah, and don't Be don't. very respectful to, to your peers. Um, if you have something to say, say it, like speak your opinion. Mm-hmm. And um, respect boundaries as well. Um, yeah. Respect somebody's boundaries. This is our, you know, this is our pattern. This is our rules okay. each other's. So are we gonna, are we gonna, call, this, are we gonna call this the yeah, red ring list? Yeah, I like that. 
if you could speak on the things that were added to the shield. And why we added it on there? What yeah. you guys felt like putting uh, it on there? Well, everything in the word you probably take off your mask. I'm so. just barely anything. You just don't hear. The thought process, the thought, all the work we did last night. We really um, took the two words, um, brave and then uh, positivity, and we tried to think of different words, like synonyms that go along with those. So we just kind of, I put a lot of pressure on the guys to brainstorm, think it out. So we, we created all these words, and Brother Brian created this bull, and I created the shield. And we chose words that we like to, I like never give up. little falcon. And heroic bravery, stuff that we like and want everyone else to believe in. And our cabin name is Red Rhinos. We have a red falcon that he drew. We have a rhino with a shield, like he said. And here's our little logo, double red R's. Our home is called Legacy to Win. We came up with all the stuff we like. Some of us put our Instagrams. Well, for mine, it is bike life. I'm really passionate about it. My hobby is basketball. I put a camera right here because I like to record myself. We're able to create a shared experience between them. So now there's something that they can all relate to. Because we're trying to eat together, we're trying to work together, live together, play together. So that we can really learn from each other. After the first day, they were already starting to buddy buddy, and then now they're texting each other even if they're sitting next to each other, which is real cute. Like, even if they're in different trail groups, they're like, oh, I missed you. Come back to the cabin, like, oh, Amy, I missed you. Or that's really cute, and it's really nice that they're able to, like, have that bond. Um, seeing like them getting off the bus and no one is talking to anybody to now like wanting to brush their teeth together and everything together so it's been a really nice transition. Bravery means to me thinking outside of the box and outside of your comfort zone to do something. What you're willing to do to, uh, to help this or protect that kind of thing or what's important to you and all that it also feels like a, a sense of hope depending on what's going on. So we're experiencing smoke from the Dixie fire um, that is burning off to our northwest. It's over 200,000 acre fire uh, that throughout the days has put smoke into our valley. When I say fire, you say drill. Fire, drill. If you can hear my voice, point at the flagpole. If you can do me a favor and point at me. So when it comes to the fire drill, we want to make sure that we are lining up as a cabin leader, you need to make sure that you have all of your people in your cabin. Every single person is accounted for. Once we get above 150 AQI, which is the air quality index, it's unsafe for our youth and staff to be outside breathing and participating in it. On Tuesday, it looks like we're gonna get a good wind blowing in. And then like Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, all outside oh, doing sure. our, our normal stuff. Today I'm brave. 
I'm super shy, actually. But once I'm able to vocalize or verbalize or even, you know, just dance, that helps me to, you know, shake loose some of those fears. And if you're doing it in a group with your peers, like we, like we did, um, that also helps because you don't feel like you're alone and you have to build that confidence. One, two, three. This is my rally cry I'm brave. I'm brave. And I think that's a great exercise for any young person if they have uh, something to speak about or say. Um, they could write it out, they could dance it out, they could just vocalize it emotionally for kids if they can connect with what you're saying and they're able to free themselves in that way um, it's it's therapeutic Learning to be patient with each other helps build confidence with each other and then they can go out and do things together and execute brave assignments, you know. But kids at this age really need to, this I think, need to tap into being patient. Because we can talk about empathy and all of these things, but everything starts from that patient part and then the confidence part and, and being secure in themselves that they can then execute. It's like loving yourself to then love. Confidence building is essential for any child. And that's what we have to, that's what we're nurturing here at Brave Camp, is, is self-confidence and being able to speak without feeling as if um, they're out of place. It's a great confidence booster to be able to, you know, say something that you're feeling and have the, the, your peers or whoever's in the room uh, react positively to it. Oh my, bro, I'm lit, bro. We can't get lit. Oh, 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 oh. Y'all over here whispering. Y'all afraid of being embarrassed in front of everybody. You're afraid, man. You're afraid. You're afraid, bro. You're afraid. Get to the boat, get in 
my throat. Kicked in your post. Yo, you already know. Baby boy, you don't want to smoke. Yeah, put me in the booth, baby. The fact that they, that someone could get up and hold a microphone in this environment uh, and actually even try to say something is a, is a huge step. You know, and you could tell they were they were shy yesterday, but eventually more people wanted to, you know, more kids wanted to join in because they saw it was okay that their peer did it. So you're gonna always have kids who are more confident in that moment, even if they're shy in that moment, they'll get loud and because the the music is a cushion and it was a cushion yesterday. Like, okay, yeah, I, I can do this if I'm just here. They're not really hearing me, but I'm still getting this moment to express myself. They have to start getting to know themselves. It's falling in love with yourself and it comes with, the one big word love comes with patience and confidence and bravery. Life is a good word. What's yours? I like giraffe. I like giraffe. I love it. So ready. I got like 70 kids, you know, they full of energy, full of life. That's what I want everyone to be, full of energy and full of life, full of potential. So we're going to help them unlock some of that potential right now. Yeah. Going to go meditate. <laughs> Look at all of these trees around, guys. I mean, isn't this just beautiful? Iron Man. Yeah. They're full of life. <laughs> and you know what they're doing? They're giving us oxygen. They're giving us oxygen, and they're constantly trying to reach their potential. So the sun is up there, right? They're reaching towards it. Even though they know they'll never reach it, it doesn't stop. And that's such a beautiful thing. Because that's what we're here to do. Just go for it. We all are given a, an innate power. We, we all have it within us. And I want kids to realize what their power is and that it's already inside. So they don't have to look outside themselves. They can look inside and find a world of power, of strength, of exploration. So through mindfulness, through health, through connecting with that inner power, they can bring that power out into the world and share it with other people. And then that way we create a ripple effect and then the world starts to change because everyone starts to feel like, hey, he found it within himself, she found it within herself. Let me look in myself and find that same power. All right, sir, what's your superpower? It can be anything. Say again. Helping people. Okay, that's a great superpower, man. So this guy is very, very helpful. How about yourself? Reading and knowledge. Oh, what you say, brother? Reading and knowledge. Reading and knowledge. That's too much, not too much knowledge. Okay, okay, fantastic. Wow. Whoa. He can make smoke come out of his mouth without smoking anything. That's an amazing superpower. Well, that's Big knowledge. man, what you got? Basketball running. Ooh! So you can just tear it down on the court. Oh, man, he can just. Okay. He don't even need to dunk. He can just go like this. Okay, you got finger rolls and all that. Okay. And <laughs> what about you, buddy? I got the power of being built different, bruh. Ooh! <laughs> <laughs> okay, who about who about this? The two ladies right here. Let's go. You gotta claim at least a couple. I know, she got, she's sipping. Yeah, I don't got a couple of hats. Do you like, have a superpower? You do. Uh, I, I can cook. <laughs> so if I can get them to tap into that, whatever their talents might be, if it's making someone feel comfortable or being a leader, uh, that's a superpower. We're gonna connect with each other. So another thing I wanna share with you all, when minds come together, you create a third mind which is a mastermind. That's why teams that work well together and think well are elite because their third mind that they create supersedes other teams who are at war with each other, who aren't on the same court. So right now we're gonna create a collective mind to go in and say, hey, we can do this. Now close your eyes. 
When you close your eyes, I want you to look inside yourself. Use your inner vision. When we close our eyes, we still have a very vivid world that only we know. Now I want you to imagine a bridge, and I want you to walk across that bridge. On the other side of that bridge, there was something that was painful. Maybe it was physical. Maybe it was something that happened in your family. Maybe it was something that hurt your feelings. Empathy is a way to connect to the feeling or emotions of another human being. And for children, it's important to develop that skill early on. Be brave, give you that hug and say, hey, it's gonna be all right. Now I want you to take yourself to a place. This is a happy place. I want you to remember a time in your life where things were going very well for you. Something that makes you smile. You might have accomplished something really cool. You might have gotten something that you desired for a long time. It might be someone that you thought was cute and they thought you were cute back. It made you smile, it made you feel good. I want you to connect to those happy emotions. I want you to connect to those smiles. I want you to connect to that time. What bravery means to me is like doing something that's out of your comfort zone. Doing something that you're not used to or doing something that you're that you've never done before. Not being afraid to do something. We woke up today, the sky was clear. We were able to come outside. We were able to be in the elements and enjoy ourselves. I was surprised to see some of the individuals in my group actually take the initiative to be some of the first to try the activities. Um, I wasn't expecting that just based off of the last two days, um, you know, their enthusiasm level, their energies level, but once uh, push came to shove, as they say, you know, they, they, they were up for it. Definitely need a lot of trust and uh, while you're doing it, trusting that the people around you are going to be supporting you. And working together. We all worked as a team and we got it done. So we made no one fall. We made sure they were safe. What's beautiful to see is that when they build up that courage you know, to be a little brave, then it's a lot easier for them to continue to be brave. And then we step in when we need to, but it's for them to see, oh, this doesn't work. Let's try something new. That did work. Let's keep doing that and really help create that sense of that ability to communicate, to adapt to each new circumstance. And learning about the, the different skills of each camper in your team, that now it's not the same leader every time directing the flow. And that way they're able to adapt. Throughout the week, my thing that I wanted is I wanted to take them off of campus and go out in nature. I'm a teacher, but nature itself is the best teacher. And just taking those kids out, they were nervous, but I think people like Theo who came just kicked off his shoes. He started walking barefoot and the kids were like, wow, this guy's connecting with earth. I can do that too. 
When you're in nature, everything in nature is perfectly adapted to its environment, just like those kids. Those kids, when they're home, they are adapted to their surroundings, whether that means that they have to be really, really tough. But really as we went further, that kind of just dissipated and they were more just in themselves and just being like, wow, this is amazing. My friends are here, but like, I'm also here. Survive hey, out in the wilderness you don't want to touch you, bro. Like, I want to touch you, like, bro. Like, Please don't make it jump. Please don't make it jump. Just real gentle. Make it real jump. gentle. We found a grasshopper that was about this big. Kids are holding it. And it's like most kids from where I grew up in inner city New York City, most kids that I know wouldn't even come close to something. And it's like that big. So do y'all know what that is? Is it a grasshopper? So it is a grasshopper. I heard somebody say locust. Yeah, it's not a locust. Well, technically speaking, locusts and grasshoppers are synonymous with one another. This is a great, this is a great experience of overcoming fear. Don't close your hands. Jump on your face. Well, be gentle. Be gentle. He's looking at me! <laughs> He's about to jump up you. <laughs> they were super stoked about it. They wanted to learn, and as we went further, the complaining of, oh, my legs hurt, oh, I need all these things, turned into, whoa, this is so cool, oh my god, my feet are wet, oh my god, I found that thing, look, it's a butterfly. Brave to me, it means having faith and having hope in yourself and the actions that you do. Being brave is being fierce and standing up for yourself. I feel like bravery is more about being strong or being dependent on yourself and being independent and being able to face the unknown. These are the infamous Gracie brothers. Great to see all of you guys. I'm Henner. I'm Henner. This is my brother Hidon. Hi guys. And we are from Los Angeles area is where our school is. Our grandfather created the art of Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. Our father was born in Brazil, learning Jiu-Jitsu from day one, all the way since the beginning, and brought the family's art to America in 1978. 1993, our father created the UFC, and we've been in this family of fighting, doing Jiu-Jitsu since we were two and three years old. So today we're gonna to teach you guys how to fight so that you don't have to fight. Hedron and I have done extensive work to create demographic-specific programs that allow anyone to learn. The courage to be who you are, especially in the face of adversity. Because to be who you are in your living room and no one's watching, you know what I'm saying? And there's no, nothing's at stake, that's easy to be brave. Overcoming challenges requires bravery. You guys, when we talked to you over there, we brought you in over here, you were nervous. You didn't raise your hand, you were too scared to raise your hand when he asked who was nervous. And it was like, let's take off our shoes. That was the slowest shoe taking off group of my life <laughs> I've ever seen ever in terms of are we gonna do this or are we not? So thank you guys for taking off your shoes. That took bravery. We're like, everyone take your shoes off. And like 80% of them literally were just standing there wondering if they're gonna take their shoes off because they were scared. They see these two giants walk in, you know, all decked out, jujitsu. Oh my gosh, what's gonna happen to us? So that was part of the class was helping them have the courage to just step on the mat. Whatever it was, we felt that the confidence jujitsu gave us allowed us to persevere and overcome. And it doesn't take much for a child to feel empowered. They don't even realize that they're learning how to fight. Here's the idea. Learn how to fight so you never have to. The idea is this. The most important thing is the ability to set a boundary. So at the heart of any child's true internal ability to set a boundary that will help them in a situation against an aggressor, at the core of their ability to do that needs to be their feeling of personal safety. And that feeling of personal safety is what we teach by teaching jujitsu. If this guy wants to fight him, we don't know if it's a friend from way back in the day that Zeke forgot who this guy is, but he's just coming up on him right now. But 
Would you guys say this is acceptable or is he doing a little too close? Are you feel me? He's in his space. Standing up a good idea, yes or no? Yes. Probably. But at least do anything standing up, including set the boundary, including kick, including run. But he can't run from here. Stand up, Zeke. Nice. Excellent. So check this out. Watch this, you guys. So he don't sit down right here. Watch this. Check this out. Zeke, stand right here next to me. This is amazing. So here's the deal. Oh, good. So look. So when normal, if someone comes up on Gino right here, he gets up any old way, stand up. He's very vulnerable to be pushed back down. He's off balance. Okay, come again. Look, off balance. Look, look, look. He's right here. He's very tippable if the person pushes him. But what Zeke did that was very good, and we want to have all of us practice, is you take the bottom leg, watch what Gino does instead. You can actually. It's called base. Everyone say base. Hey. We started with very basic non-contact techniques. So they would just get a sense of trusting us in the room. And I'm like, all right. We're gonna have to trust each other to be successful today in jujitsu. So we showed the first technique. We had three or four volunteers and that's all we need to break the ice. Those first volunteers were courageous. They came up, we used them. They had fun, they were safe. Yes. And then everyone else is watching. Everyone clapped for them. It's not that scary. And they're building their courage. Literally on the mat with us, they were building their courage. So you don't me by the wrist, I make my base, check it out. Wait, what? <laughs> Look, 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 look. The back hand comes in, grabs the front and holds tighter. And now I'm going to drive my elbow towards Hidon using alabanca, which means leverage. Everyone say alabanca. And then we got to the more close, connected, physical techniques where they're actually holding each other down. And they're physically grappling with each other. And then we look around the room and even the kids who were like, no, nah, I don't need this. I don't want to do it. They were the ones having the most fun, building their confidence. And only on the other side of that personal feeling of safety do they then develop the courage to say, hey, don't ever do that again. The Japanese word jujitsu means gentle art. That's the best part. If we defend ourselves, we don't have to hurt the attacker. We're gonna protect them while we protect ourselves. We can fight any one of you guys right now. Who wants to fight right now? Who really wants to fight? Who feels like today's their day? Every threat scenario we presented to them today, with our help, we were able to teach them the techniques to overcome these otherwise impossible scenarios. All these kids have jujitsu at their fingertips. All they gotta do is make the step and start learning these techniques. And then one day, no matter where they land, they're gonna have a confidence that is unshakable. It's affecting everyone and helping everyone positively. Those guys are amazing. They're amazing. Seven, eight, really high. This is the process right here of brave shot. After you make it, I then give it to the person who uh, took the brave shot. So here you go, man. Thank you. It's all yours. It was an honor. All right. All right. Bravery to me is just one being who you are. I think sometimes we put a mask up because we're afraid to show the world who we really are inside. And so if we can take that mask down and show someone who we truly are, then I think that's being brave. I'm gonna encourage you to do something today and you can do it in two ways. So we're here, here in Brave Camp and I'm gonna ask you to express what brave means to you, not by the way it looks, but the way it makes you feel. So you have an option to use a mask or a canvas, whatever makes you feel comfortable. So at Brave Camp, I introduced a creative expression exercise, which is a metaphor and a concept of these paper masks. And part of the reason that's so powerful is the visual of having a mask on your face is something that we can all relate to. We all wear masks, but we don't always show up authentically. So I'd ask the children to paint the outside of the mask of emotions that you're putting out in the world. And so by the act of creating I'm actually giving permission for my emotions to be seen outside of myself. And a lot of children that I met in a brave camp were never given permission to be seen. 
When you think of the word confidence, you think bravado, you think this exertion of a certain persona. But what really builds confidence is really recognizing that we are all creators. And oftentimes people think they have to be an artist. And what I saw is in the eyes, especially the, the youth that have never really painted or sketched before, the recognition that you're creating for yourself. Art can allow you to get to that point where you're able to tell your story in a way that makes you feel safe, that allows you to play, and that allows you to tap into your imagination. Ultimately, all that matters is you're allowing yourself to release and express all that stuff that's inside of you, and that builds confidence. Because the more you do it, the greater my voice can become, and the more I can own my story and my truth, that builds confidence. I think bravery means being confident, being able to accomplish anything that you put your mind to, and being able to stick up for others. Not being like afraid of doing things that you're not used to, like being comfortable with being uncomfortable. Brave, for me, means determination. Having courage. Facing your fears. There's a couple things we don't say. I should have mentioned this. We don't say, don't look down, because you say, don't look down, somebody wants the first thing down. they do. <laughs> you're looking down. And then, the other thing we don't say is, don't die. When we were out on the high ropes course, um, the idea is that a kid is going to be climbing up something that is probably very scary for them. I am going to be hooked into the rope there, and I'm going to be belaying you. Um, and the rope is going to be attached to this thing right here. And that's what keeps you safe. How did you fall? Did you do anything else? Oh, over time. No, if, so if you fall, what happens is let's say you're climbing up halfway and you slip. I got the rope. You won't really drop down. Maybe you'll drop down like two, three feet, but like I will, I'll catch you there and then you can just like hop back on and keep climbing. You're not gonna go all the way down. I find that also when kids are doing the high ropes course, they are like the most unapologetically themselves. That coolness, that I'm gonna impress people goes away because they're scared. And then as they're going across, they're just conquering that. As they walk across, you literally saw the confidence in themselves build. Because the first part is the hardest part. Get on the line, oh my God, it's wobbly. Wait, I could do this. Walking across and then they pick up a rhythm and all of a sudden they're at the very end and they just conquered that huge thing. Tell everybody what you want. And just letting people know what you want is so huge in life as well. When they're pulling you up, they are taking what you said and they are respecting that and they are doing exactly what you said. You wanna go super slow? Well, go super slow. You wanna go blazing fast and get shot up into orbit? Let's do it, 100%. And they respect that. And so towards the back, their job is a little bit easier. Towards the front, the job's a lot harder. But then they start rotating and see like, wow, it was really easy in the back, but people in the front, they had a little bit harder. I didn't know that before. What if I was like, oh my God, why are you guys so slow up there? But instead you're in their shoes like, wow, maybe I just didn't know what the situation was beforehand. And hopefully they can relate it back to their lives where they can walk around and have that empathy. Maybe I don't know how everybody feels. Maybe I can't just jump to a conclusion. Maybe I have to put myself in their shoes to figure out, yeah, maybe I should feel for them a little bit and maybe give a little bit of respect just because I don't know what they're going through. Do you guys remember our commands from yesterday? Yeah. yeah. Support team ready? Ready. Can I trust you? And I can't trust you, exactly. Thank you, Juan. Can I get on here? Alright, yeah. support team ready? ready. Can I trust you? Just them clipping in and saying their support commands of support team ready and then can I trust you is huge. You know, I was like the first one to go, so I didn't know what to do. Like, I didn't know where, where, all, where to go. And then I just trusted him, because he said I could trust him.
putting trust in essentially in a stranger because they only met me like five days ago, being able to know like my life is in this guy's hands and if at any point he messes up, I can drop out of a tree. But instead, they went up and they had that confidence in me. I had to compose myself before I could let go because I didn't, I didn't trust it. But once I did it, it got easier. It was horrifying. Uh, maybe because usually there's not always a person going to be able to help you or anything like that. Um, so having someone right there to help you push off occasionally um, is pretty nice. Knowing that you're in safe hands, especially in the of an adult. Considering I only met them a couple a couple days ago, it wasn't. It was pretty hard. But when when I was coming down. They got my complete trust, man. That's about it. I, when I was coming down, I trust them completely now at this point. It was cool. I liked it. You know, it was, it was, I was scared at first. But you know, like, this is brave camp. You don't gotta face your fear. You already made it, though. You already made it. You only gonna get lower. You already there. Yep. Once you step off, you're already like, there. Now you gotta complete the mission. Let's get it. Mission impossible. You can't do it. You can't do it. You, you can't do it. Don't say you can't. No. You got it. You good. You can do it. You good, bro. Whenever you're ready. Fortnite, you good, let's go. Bro. Nothing gonna happen. I promise. Map Nothing gonna happen. There. You good. You gotta land. Come on. I died in the inside. I, I was just, I was like this, tightening my muscles harder as soon as I felt the wind. You know you could have let go that whole time. Right? I know, I let go at the end. Yeah, I, I, I straight up, bro. I was just getting ready to just let go. On the inside, I passed out for y'all. Y'all probably, probably saw a smile on my face with a big grin. But uh, I was, I was dead in the inside until I got to the end. Kept my word. I did it. I was a little nervous, and I, I just trusted the guy that was blaming me. Like, trust is everything. You can't be skeptical of everyone in life because you're just not going to get anywhere. You have to be able to instill some trust in people, and it's going to help you move forward, and it's going to open more doors for you. To take some of this, you know, maybe I jumped off, you know, the zip line, and I just, I've never done that, and I would never do that again, but I did that. And so now, when I say I can't, I can think about it and just take that T off and be like, now I can. Human biology in our head tells us that that is not okay. To just look off and look almost into the abyss and just be like, I'm supposed to jump. And I feel like that jump is purely a leap of trust, a leap of faith. Because you're trusting that person down there that they have you. 
And if at any point that person doesn't have you, something goes wrong. But that doesn't happen. Because the person who is belaying them, whether that's a staff member or whether that's a kid, that trust in them, they feel it. And they understand like, I need to be on top of my game because I have this person's life in my hands. At the end of the day, it's their choice to leap. There's no way that I can pull them off. There's no way that I can tell them, jump right now. Like, it's their choice. And so if they want to come down and climb back down, they totally can. But them taking that leap is 100% their choice. And what I think is cool is that in life, there's always pressures to do something. But for that, there's no pressure. It's them. They leap. Brave is just be willing to put yourself in situations that might have a negative outcome potentially, but doing it anyway to try and provoke a positive outcome instead. What brave means to me is somebody who's not afraid to do anything. Michael will take a risk at every chance they get. Bravery means you are willing to try new things or you go into the unknown just believing you can. I asked about five different kids just walking around. I was like, hey, are you excited to go home? And they're like, no. Why not? Don't you like being at home? It's like, yeah, but like, this place is so fun. Them wanting to leave to them wanting to stay, something in between changed that experience, whether that was the hike, whether that was going out on the ropes course, whether that was archery or kayaking, any of those things their experience flipped to a positive one. Did you know that every human has 99.9% .9 the same DNA? Yeah. There's 0.1% that makes us all different and unique. And so what the rock symbolizes, which is a hard, hard thing, very strong, that's your uniqueness, that's your superpower, that's what makes you different. So you're gonna come up here and all you have to do is say the word. Uh, my superpower is courage. Uh, hey. My superpower is that I got a fast reaction. My superpower is smart. Oh. Oh. Yeah. Oh. My, my superpower is loyalty. What is it? Loyalty. Yeah. loyalty. My superpower is kindness. My superpower is coffee! My superpower is black because I'm black. My superpower is peace. They have a real magic and a real power within that Hopefully, and I pray, this, this experience can, can help them realize and bring it out of them even more. Organizations that are coming together to put this together are in the business of hope, right? So how do we get these young people to have hope, to be brave, and to make a difference in their lives if they're not happy with their lives? Some of them come from really traumatic backgrounds. Some of them have just kind of coasted through life for right now, and they don't have any direction yet, and that's completely fine, but how do we take what we're learning here, how to be um, you know, adaptable and how to be brave and how to be flexible and how to make friends and just communicate with other people in our communities, in our areas, in our families, and how do we push that in our lives to where we can make the lives that we want. They have little brothers and sisters that they can show how to be brave to. 
And I think that's another big thing. Be brave throughout your whole community. Yeah, I believe it to my core. I've opened the door. Yeah, all right. Yeah. Let me rap. Yeah. Hey, you ready? This is my own cheer. Valley cry to the Lord. I'm ready for the real things, unlocking my brave. I'm changing my state. I'm holding on to my faith. Today we elevate. Today we shine a light. Today we are brave. This is my rally cry. Today I'm brave. I believe it to my core and I've opened up the doors. Today I'm brave. Today I'm brave. Bravery for me is uh, self-advocacy, uh, advocating for the needs and things that you need uh, for you and your team to be successful. You may not come out and be the, a mountain climber, but to that challenge, that, that bravery uh, goes into other things in life. Doing the right thing in your community, being a leader. Knowing to ask for help when help is needed, whether that be academics, mental health, um, anything of the sorts, relationship advice. I think asking for help is a big act of bravery that some kids are scared to do and some adults are scared to do. Anything that really kind of just puts you out of your comfort zone and, and make, you, make you change a little bit, make you just be your true self. I think is being brave. Bravery also means confronting yourself. Bravery can mean, you know, holding yourself accountable. Bravery means to me looking at fear in the face and stepping towards it. Today